Hello everyone, this is Jed Schlafman. I'm a holistic counselor and energy healer. Those are a couple of roles I play. Not the core of who I am, but the way I'm presenting myself to share information and ideas with those who are viewing. So for this video I'll be speaking about the topic of loving and trusting our own body. Not loving and trusting our bodies is actually very common in our society, in our human cultures, and we'll look at some of the reasons why that's the case and how we can shift our perspective and our self-concept to actually have more love and trust in relation to our physical body. One thing to consider is that some cultures are very materialistic. So people think of their physical body as kind of the core or root of their identity. So how they see themselves is very much related to how they perceive their physical body in terms of its state of health and well-being, in terms of the physical appearance, how tall or short you are, how thin or heavy you are, how, quote, normal your features appear or not relative to what the society around you sees as normal or attractive. People think of their body <clears throat> as something that gives them worth in a sense. So if your body is athletic, if it's attractive, if it's serving those roles for you in society, then you feel more self-worth or value. But if you're seeing some flaws or limitations with your body, if you don't think you're attractive relative to what society expects, if you don't think you're athletic, if you think you have some genetic limitations, if you think your brain doesn't work that well and you're not that smart, if you're thinking any of those things which are about your body, then if that's the whole of your identity, then you're going to have low self-worth, you're going to be self-critical, self-judgmental, you're going to see yourself in some way as inferior to other people. And so you're creating this negative outlook, this lack of self-worth or self-acceptance. So that's something that is relatively common. And besides the fact that people can be materialistic and over-identifying with their body relative to the other aspects of their being, such as their personality, their spiritual essence, ways that they can contribute to the world around them just by being kind and compassionate and having ethics and integrity and things of that nature. So that's the materialistic attachment. <clears throat> but also it's the social comparison aspect. So as we're growing up, the people around us are imposing their beliefs, their values or expectations. So you might have parents who are not fully appreciating and accepting you and your physical appearance. So parents may look at their child, comparing that child to siblings, to other children in the community, or just to whatever the parents' ideals or expectations might have been. So if you have a parent that's very much into athletics and the child just doesn't have an athletic type of body, that parent might be disappointed and the child can sense or feel that even if the parent's not overtly or 
directly stating or expressing that they might be sort of subtly or unconsciously showing their disappointment. And then, of course, children are always playing and competing with each other. That's kind of a natural part of socialization for childhood. So it's not that that's wrong or bad, but as we go through those experiences with our peers, we'll often either be comparing ourselves to them or we'll receive their feedback of their comparison to us. So if your peers are saying that you're too skinny or too fat, you're ugly, you're stupid, whatever things other children might be telling you, at that age you might absorb those messages and begin to think and believe those things about yourself. So instead of accepting this is your body, this is what your soul chose for this lifetime, to experience this role or character you're playing as a human being, you might start to resent your body. You might be focusing on what you think is bad or wrong with it, things you wish you could change about it. So there are many people that go through much of their life in some way resenting or rejecting their physical body, even though from a spiritual perspective, We've each chosen a particular identity or physical form to interact with this reality, to have our human experience. So it's as though this greater, deeper aspect of your being chose and em embraced having this body, but then once you're in this body with your personality developing, the personality self is starting to judge and criticize the body and not accepting it, not appreciating it, wishing it was something different. So many people are struggling with that. In some way they're seeing their physical form in a negative way <clears throat> and kind of hung up on that in a sense. They're stuck being unable to let go of that self-criticism and perhaps preoccupied with trying to do things to change their body or to compensate for what they see as the limitations of the body or the unattractive aspects of it from their perspective. Another challenge is that <clears throat> we don't appreciate the intelligence that underlies our body. You could call that a subconscious or spiritual intelligence, a field of intelligent energy that's supporting our body's growth and development and self-maintenance. If you think about our physical form or any biological organism for that matter, it's really very amazing and very incredible how this form is created and maintains itself. There's trillions of cells there all functioning in concert with each other to maintain your body's health and well-being. And in general, they're doing a pretty successful job of that. But we don't stop and appreciate it. We tend to only focus on what's going on with our body when we see something that's bothering us, something that seems wrong, we might have an injury or an illness or disease, and we're looking at our body as in some way betraying us in those situations. But in actuality, your body is always doing its best to maintain itself. It's doing what it can to survive in this physical world interacting with its environment, protecting itself, nurturing itself, etc. So your body is a really incredible, amazing thing that's been brought into this physical world. It's part of creation and you can look at it in that way and appreciate it. So you can say, 
thank you, Creator, Nature, whatever label you'd like to give to that higher intelligence, and just appreciate that you have this body that is doing everything it can in the moment to maintain itself, to allow for you to have your physical experience. So pause, take time each day perhaps to acknowledge that, to see the positives of your body and its brilliance, its beautiful intelligence that's maintaining it. And then also to let go of all the judgments, all the criticisms that you may have applied toward your body or that other people around you may have presented from their judgments, their criticisms, etc. So to let all that go and shift to this more positive, self-accepting perspective, appreciating your body, recognizing that it's unique. Every person on earth has their own unique physical form. It may be similar in many ways to others, but not completely identical. And depending on which form you have, it might suit different life paths. Not everyone is here incarnated to have the same life path and the same experiences, the same roles, and so on. So sometimes a person may have a physical handicap that's meant to be there as part of their life path, something the soul has chosen, something that fosters spiritual growth that enables certain types of experiences. So it's not bad or wrong that a person may have that type of physical handicap. Not everyone is meant to be a movie star, a model, an athlete. Not everyone is meant to have a very long life at least not for that particular incarnation. They might have, through their soul, other incarnations that are much longer. So we can accept that we have this physical form. It's here to facilitate our life journey, our unique experiences. And the more that we are able to actually love and trust our body and not reject it, not doubt it, not disregard its power and its wisdom, then the more smoothly it can actually function. When you start to have negative beliefs about your body, those can affect your body and have a negative influence on how your body is actually functioning. If you believe that your body doesn't know how to protect itself, to nourish itself, if you believe that at the slightest sign of sickness, you're always going to have to see a doctor to get some type of medication because you don't believe your body knows what to do, then that could fuel more of those types of undesired situations with your body. You're kind of giving this negative message to your body that I don't trust you, I don't believe in your power, and through that subconscious mental program, you can actually impact the energy and the function of your body in a negative way, actually creating symptoms of illness or disease. So let's choose or intend to embrace a positive belief about our body, that it is wise, it has this brilliant intelligence allowing trillions of cells and even other organisms, microbes, to work together with those cells to maintain our body. So it's this vast ecosystem that has an intelligence guiding it. And we can appreciate that and honor and value that. and try to relax about it, not to overthink it, to just trust our body 
rather than getting anxious or worried about every little thing going on with our body. So having that trust <coughs> opens up the flow of that divine intelligence and energy to fully nurture and sustain our body. The more we're in that calm, trusting state, that state of kind of pure flow, of pure love, pure appreciation, then the more things naturally take care of themselves, the more our health unfolds in an effortless way. I hope that this brief discussion, this commentary has given you some insight and inspiration. For those that are interested in holistic health and wellness, I invite you to be my website which is phinsights.com that's p-h-i-n-s-i-g-h-t-s dot c-o-m and for now I wish everyone a wonderful day Namaste